Some serious classics on this list. And also the longest one so far. There's too many of them! Then I better crunch the numbers. Today we are ranking over 40 death metal albums from 1993, and we're starting with Cynic and Focus. <laughs> Another absolute classic from these progressive death metal legends fusing their Floridian roots with jazz. Definitely some cross-pollination here with death and atheist, making for quality, if not at times, more ambitious songwriting and performances. Veil of Maya is an incredible opener and it only continues to broaden out from there stylistically. There's a reason why you'll find this on so many best death metal and progressive lists, despite it being their only 90s release. So this one is going to perfection. Then we have Brutality, with screams of anguish. The debut full length from this Florida band in the wake of a series of demos. I see some people really enjoying this, but personally for me, it's another one with some solid guitar work and impressive soloing, but a vocal performance that really just does nothing for me. And the production isn't really great either. So it is going to meh tier. Then we have Gorguts with the erosion of sanity. <laughs> Hearing more death influence and some prog elements seeping into this second album, still not full tilt gore guts, but the increased technicality definitely makes for a more interesting listen. Really solid stuff, dropped from the label leading up to a five year hiatus though, with only Luke LeMay remaining, but I, I like this album a lot, so I'm putting it at amazing. Then there's Hypocrisy with Osculum Obscenum. <laughs> The second album from this Swedish band fronted by the also famous producer Peter Tatgren. Similar to my notes on the debut, I'm more of a fan of this band's transition into the melodic death metal sound that they're more known for today. This is still much more of a pure death metal record, and while it's not terrible, it's always struck me as pretty far down overall quality in terms of their like totem pole, if you will. The vocals especially, some cool bass and guitar parts, but overall I would say this is just... Okay. Then we have Cancer with the Sins of Mankind. This UK band's third album, again drawing some comparisons to fellow Brits Carcass with their guitar work. Unfortunately, the execution is a little messy and the production is even worse, which the comparison only makes more noticeable, I would say. Even so, I have fun with this album and I like the proggy riffs, kind of calling back to Carcass's last album in particular. So I'm going to put this one at fantastic. Very strong, just has some minor qualms. Then we have Edge of Sanity with the Spectral Sorrows. <laughs> Album number three from these Swedes featuring producer Dan Sueno, now more fully transitioning into the progressive and melodic death metal sound. There's still plenty of old school here, but they meld together for some pretty spectacular moments like with those skanky beats on Living Hell and the riffing on the mask feeling like a precursor to some of my favorite albums of The Haunted and Soil Work. On the flip side, there is some slower stuff like Lost that I'm just not that into, and I'm not in love with the clean vocals on tracks like Blood of My Enemies either. I'm gonna put this one overall at good tier. Then we have Dismember with Indecent and Obscene. The sophomore album from this big four of Swedish death metal band, still really enjoying the ferocious riffs, but I feel like the vocals don't work for me quite as well on this one. That said, there are some interesting developments too, with some tracks that feel like there's rock and alternative influences a la Helmet. Makes me think of Napalm Death during their later 90s as well. Enjoyable and Soul Devourer is a banger. Some people like this one more, but I definitely prefer the debut overall. I'm putting it at great tier. Y'all, of course, we have plenty more albums to go, but if you're enjoying the video so far, help me out by hitting the like button. If you don't like the video, hit the dislike button. It's all engagement to me. Comment below, too, your favorite and least favorite death metal albums of 1993, and also anything that you would have added to this list. But next up, we have Necrophobic with the Nocturnal Silence. <laughs> Agent, 
The debut album from this Swedish band named after the song of the same name off of Slayer's Rain and Blood. Good mix of the entombed buzzsaw D-beat sound with some more melodic at the gates sounding riffs. The lineup features David Vincent Parland, also of Dark Funeral on keys and guitars. Great production and atmosphere. Love the organ on the nocturnal silence and that cascading riff on Shadows of the Moon. This one rocketed all the way up to perfection. And we got Dark Tranquility with Sky Dancer. <laughs> The debut from one of my favorite bands of all time, Anders does vocals here from In Flames, and the jump from this to the gallery is kind of night and day, but still really interesting if a little bit all over the place, a little lacking in focus. Production can be rough at times too. Definitely among my least favorite releases to revisit from the band, which says something considering this is one of my all-time favorite discographies, but even despite some of the really aggressive moments, I'm kind of bored on a lot of this too, so it's just going to okay tier but we'll have much nicer things to say about this band moving forwards then we have at the gates and with fear i kiss the burning darkness Sick title perfectly capturing the mixture of heaviness and dark atmosphere, further setting the blueprint for the Gothenburg Mellow Death movement. Some steps up from the last one with more cool dynamics on songs like Light of Christ, The Break of Autumn, and The Architects. Lots of neat little start-stop moments in terms of performances. Pretty solid effort, if a little gloomy. Not one of my overall favorite favorites from them, but really great stuff, and especially in this year it stands out. So it's going to amazing. Amazing! Then we have Wombath with Internal Caustic Torments. Another Swedish death metal debut. This is actually their only 90s full length, and they wouldn't put out another one until 2015, which I recall enjoying a lot. This one, on the other hand, feels a little bit late to the party for what it's doing, and also kind of redundant as a result. Sort of a cross between the entombed dismember kind of sound and early Cannibal Corpse, the latter especially in the very Chris Barnes sounding vocals. Kind of forgettable overall. Nothing's really terrible on this list, I would say, but yeah, this one landed at meh for me. Then we have Suffocation with Breeding the Spawn. Noticeably thinner production on this one due to some financial issues with Roadrunner Records. I will say, though, that the bass sounds pretty rad, and the songwriting and performances only get more complex, dynamic, and technical. So I'm kind of a defender of this album. Lots of great tracks on here, honestly. Beginning of Sorrow, Breeding the Spawn, Epitaph of the Credulous. I'm going to put this one at great tier. Then we have Pandemonium with Chaos. <laughs> Back with the second album from this Swedish avant-garde death metal band, and I was intrigued to hear it after checking out the debut last time. Another expansive and often strange fusion of everything and the kitchen sink. It's as if whatever genre hit the dartboard, they switched to that on the fly. Definitely makes for one of the more interesting and unique listens on this list, but I do wish the vocals also had more dynamics to go along with it. They can be kind of distractingly dull in comparison to everything else, so I split the difference on this one. It's going to good. Here. Then we have Disincarnate with Dreams of the Carry On Kind. <laughs> The one and only album from this band founded by guitarist James Franklin Murphy of Cancer, Obituary, Death, and Testament fame. That's quite the pedigree. Another killer injection of progressive death metal pulling, especially from the death side of things, but I can really hear DNA from all of those bands here. Awesome guitar and drumming across the board. Vocals could be a little more interesting, but as a whole, this is a must listen and landed at fantastic. Then another big one here, we have Morbid Angel with Covenant. Confront me! Breakthrough album, thanks in part to God of Emptiness being featured on Beavis and Butthead. More satanic and religious themes, influenced Portal and Dead Congregation. More fusions here of the heavy and more atmospheric elements on tracks like Rapture, Vengeance is Mine, and World of Shit. And also plenty of great riffs and dynamic moments, making for an all-around more memorable experience overall. This one's going to perfection. Then there's Malevolent Creation with Stillborn. <laughs> Thank you.
the third album from this Florida band, and unfortunately it feels like a step down, which may have something to do with the circumstances around recording and conflicts with label, again, Roadrunner, who would have thought, who ended up dropping them. Some solid guitar work, but the songwriting is clunky and the vocal performance comes off as pretty bland, which is all the more distracting considering it's the loudest thing in the mix. Feels like people recording out of obligation instead of passion, which makes for a pretty dull listen in my opinion. So uh, I'll be interested in the comments. People really disagree with me on this, but this is just okay to me. Then we have Pestilence with Spheres. <laughs> The final album before a 14 year hiatus from 1994 to 2008, experimenting with a more progressive sound, guitars, synthesizers, and jazz influences. More fun proggy guitar work, but the songwriting does get a little avant-garde to the point where it feels like style over substance, very spacey as well. A little messy and meandering, but with solid performances. I also like the little interludes, reminds me of PC gaming back in the 90s. So I know I was being a little bit critical there, but I'd still say this wound up at amazing for me. Then there's Sinister with Diabolical Summoning. Very chuggy stuff from this Netherland band's second album, Love the Bass Tone. Another one I see fairly strong fan ratings for, but I find it to be a little bit generic. The vocals could use some more dynamics, and the songwriting in general just doesn't strike me as particularly memorable. A fine listen, just nothing too special. This one's going to good tier. Then there's Mortification with post momentary Affliction. The third album from this Christian Australian death metal group, this time pulling more from their roots in thrash. Solid mix of groove and speed with a little doom in there. I feel like the mix could be a little better, but overall I just dig the energy of this one. I also appreciate the variation in vocals and general dynamics I find missing in some of these other albums. And great bass too. That solo in particular is wicked. I am going to put this one at great tier. And we have Ill Disposed with Four Depressive Seasons. <laughs> Danish death metal debut, the music and general atmosphere is wicked, but you have to really crank the volume to even hear it. Seems like a pretty fixable mix to me. Getting a little left hand path along with some black metal sounding elements, great pacing and dynamics, good mix of ripping, tearing blast beats, and more ominous slower sections. This one landed at fantastic for me, and someone please remaster this. Then we have Rotrevor with Iniquitous. <laughs> The only full-length album from this U.S. band, but they are still apparently active despite the last release being an EP from 2013. Fairly basic, but with a real emphasis on brutality in the vocals. I also like when they turn up the reverb on the snarls for a truly cavernous effect. I saw some reviewers on Metal Archives call this an underrated classic, but I struggled to remember anything of real substance after listening to it. The riffs are about as meat and potatoes as they come, so yeah, even though it's a decently enjoyable listen, it's still... Landed at meh for me. Then we have Carcass with Heartwork. One of the true blueprints of melodic death metal as we know it, and from one of the most stylistically flexible bands out there, I love the fusion of their extreme roots with the melodic hooks. A great album all the way through, but my personal favorites here are Carnal Forge, No Love Lost, and Death Certificate. This also features artwork from H.R. Geiger, number 51 on Rolling Stone's 100 Greatest Metal Albums of All Time, and it's got to go to perfection. Then we have Brugiro with Matando Gueros. <laughs> A rare death metal album from Mexico on this list, and one covering a broad array of topics from drug trafficking and border crossing to satanic rituals. I see this cover art making the rounds a lot too for being controversial, considering it is a real image from a shock newspaper. I think the album is a little bit more interesting to talk about as opposed to being a good listen though, musically. It feels very thrown together and even improvisational at times. You could argue it's also a little bit more grindy. So yeah, this one went to okay for me. Then we have Benediction with Transcend the Rubicon. <laughs> 
the third album from this UK band that I also unintentionally missed, both on the 1990 and 1991 list. Sorry about that. Notably, Barney Greenway was also an early vocalist for this band, but here it's Dave Ingram, who has also played with Bolt Thrower, including on the album Honor, Valor, Pride. Solid album here with lots of great riffing and dynamic songwriting. It actually does feel like kind of a more progressive take on those death metal era Napalm Death records, so... I'm going to put this one at amazing. Really had a good time with it. Then there's Excruciate with Passage of Life. <laughs> Another one album wonder with this now defunct Swedish band. For some reason, Spotify has this album credited as a 1991 release, but everywhere else it said 93. Another fairly basic album overall. It does have some surprise pace changes that caught me off guard, but overall this one was also meh for me. Then there's Macabre with Sinister Slaughter. <laughs> What is that sound? The second album following up Gloom in 1989 from this group out of Downers Grove, Illinois, not far from where I grew up. Pretty sure I saw some high school football games there. My friend familiarized me to this group with the 2000s album Dahmer following the major events in the life of the serial killer of the same name. This album though covers a broad array of serial killers and I kind of enjoyed the Sgt. Pepper's Serial Killer Edition parody cover art, which pretty much sums it all up. Their particular mix of death, thrash, and grind with a dark sense of humor is definitely not for everyone and in particular whenever they include these squeaky falsetto vocals my ears start to bleed and I laugh uncontrollably. <laughs> that aside, plenty of solid riffs, the production is decent, it's it's kind of a fun listen so yeah give, give it a spin <laughs> like anything else on this list. I put it at good tier. Then we have Pathologist with Grinding Opus of Forensic Medical Problems. <laughs> The second and final album from this Chechia death and gore grind band, another album that really emphasizes the ugliest parts of the genre with belchy vomit vocals and grimy production. The phrase impressively sickening comes to mind. It's disgusting, but also pretty fun. A lot of times these vocals can strike me as annoying, but it all comes together pretty well here. So I'm gonna put this one at great tier. Then we have Merciless with Colored Funeral. <laughs> I almost neglected to put France on the board for a second time with this sophomore death thrash album. Killer melodic riffing giving Sweden a run for their money and with plenty of breakneck speed to go with it. The vocals are a little one note but the excellent mix and production job really brings everything into perfect balance. So yeah this one is going to fantastic. Then we have Sentenced with North From Here. The second album from this Finnish band I unfortunately also missed on the 1991 list. It's hard to keep up with everything, y'all. I, I try my best. <laughs> They're more known these days for gothic metal, but their early work here is more technical and melodic death metal. Much like Therion, though, I can already hear some of their inclination towards atmosphere on this release. Great riffing and comparisons to At The Gates. I also really like the vocal performance. Each syllable cuts like a knife. Some cool moments for the bass, too, as on Wings. Really enjoyed this album. So much so, I'm putting it at perfection. Then we have Acrostichon with Engraved in Black. <laughs> Netherlands band following up several demos and splits with their first LP, and I gotta say, I, I think it's pretty shit, honestly. Like, bland vocals, messy performances, unfocused songwriting. Again, if you love it, more power to you. I am not the end-all be-all here. I don't think that my opinion is the only one. But yeah, it is going to meh tier, and to quote Mr. Horse from Ren and Stimpy. No, sir. I didn't like it. Then we have Morgoth with Odium. The second album from this German group, pretty interesting sound, kind of having elements that remind me of Sepultura mixed with Obituary and at times some very crossover thrash sounding vocals. Very unique vibe and ahead of its time. Love the drumming, Under the Surface also has a very harmonic heavy hook that feels like it could have influenced Queens of the Stone Age of all things. Among the most interesting albums here if lacking some focus, so I'm gonna put this one at fantastic. Then we have Unleashed with Across the Open Sea. Album three from these Swedes continuing to lean ever further into Norse mythology. Weaker production and mix though. It feels kind of like a garage recording 
And I'm surprised to see fan ratings putting this as high as the last two. I think the songs are pretty cool, but again, I'm just distracted by the recording. It just feels like they should be much grander sounding than they are. So that landed this at okay for me. Then there's God Macabre with The Winter Long. <laughs> The only LP from this defunct Swedish band, I'd compare this album sound to certain autopsy albums in the alternations between punky D-beats and doomier sections, but I actually think that the pacing is better overall, and the deeper you get in, the more atmosphere picks up. So I'm going to put this one at good tier. Then we have Pyrexia with Sermon of Mockery. <laughs> Another debut, this one out of New York and focused very much on the brutal side of the genre, definitely picking up notes of both Suffocation and Cannibal Corpse. Solid production with plenty of impact to the drums and lots of speed. Kind of imitating things that had already been done though, but it's done so tightly and effectively that I'd argue in some cases they do it better. So I'm going to put this one at great tier. Then there's Demolish with Nesbeth. I've had this Finnish death metal debut recommended to me a number of times, and with its technical guitar work and more avant-garde songwriting, I can totally see why. Proggy riffs play alongside gurgly vocals in a way that modern audiences might compare to the likes of Artificial Brain and Afterbirth. Maybe a little repetitive, but even so, I can always vibe to this one. Shame that this was their only full length, because it is very good, and I'm putting it at amazing. Then we have Electrocution with Inside the Unreal. <laughs> Another debut album, this one coming to us from Italy, and it definitely hooked me in with that transition into the groove on opening track Premature Burial. Pretty gnarly vocal moments, too. Also, great bass and drumming on the techie Rising of Infection. More killer songwriting and engaging pacing. Underrated and under-discussed, I would say, which is why it's going to... fantastic. Then we have Damaged with Do Not Spit. <laughs> Another debut LP, this time from Australia, and this is just pure chaos, but not in a good way. Really annoying vocals, more groove metal, but not in the like fun, interesting way. And yeah, this is going to meh tier. Then we have Unanimated with In the Forest of the Dreaming Dead. <laughs> The first album from the Swedish melodic death metal band inspired by Dismember. Lots of chilling cascading guitar tremolos and also drawing comparisons to Dissection. And there's also a Venom cover. And speaking of black metal, there's plenty of that energy in the spooky synths as well. The vocals bring down my enjoyment a bit, but otherwise this is a very strong recommendation that I'm going to put at amazing. Then there's Ceremonial Oath with the Book of Truth. <laughs> The first of just two albums from this Swedish group featuring members that would go on to play with Hammerfall, Tiamat, In Flames, and Cemetery. It can go pretty hard, but isn't above throwing in a bluesy solo and some groove either. Some pretty damn fine melodically tinged riffing in general. The main issue for me here are the, frankly, pretty obnoxious vocals, which go for a very grindy kind of rah, 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 rah approach. <laughs> no finesse, just random screaming. Far from the worst thing on this list, but not something I'd choose to revisit over some of the other choices. Far from the worst thing on this list, but not something I'd choose to revisit over some of the other choices here. So it's going to okay. Then we have Atheist with Elements. <laughs> I keep saying it, but these guys are always just ahead of their time. It's kind of like if Primus made death metal. The bass absolutely cooks and the drumming and guitar work are just in a league of their own. There's also a crazy like flamenco acoustic section. Vocals get a little goofier in places on this one, but on some level that also adds to its uniqueness within the genre. I don't think it's quite as tight as the first two. A little looser and jammier. Goes a bit overboard with the soloing in places, but still going to... Fantastic. Then we have Mortis Scold with Dying Remains. The debut album from this Milwaukee, Wisconsin band, I actually just listened to the latest album, Creation Undone, a little while back. Really dig the production and overall sound. The faster parts in particular are great, but the doomier sections detract from it a bit for me. So a bit of a mixed bag, but in this case, I'd say it's even more so based on personal taste. I could see plenty of others ranking this higher. For me, I ended up putting it at good tier. Then we have Morg with Eroded Thoughts. <laughs> 
more pretty raw death metal with some bluesy rock solos and a bit of a garage recording quality. I do appreciate some of the proggier leanings of the guitar work, maybe some mild comparisons to Carcass on that front, but overall the effect is still largely one of brute force. And overall the presentation and execution feels a little lackluster, so this one also wound up at meh. Then we have Apophis with Gateway to the Underworld. <laughs> Another debut album from Germany, this time with inspirations from Egyptian mythology and the occult. Pretty cool psychedelic cover art too, already setting it apart from many of the others on this list. Very dense musicianship with more progressive leanings and a cool atmosphere. I saw some lower scores out there for this one, but for me it's another that scratches that itch for things that stand out from everyone else. Comparable in some ways to Atheist, but with a darker tone. Yeah, for me this wound up at amazing and kind of high up at that. Then we have Eucharist with a Velvet Creation. Another Swedish band in a similar vein of At The Gates, but unfortunately I'd say here the comparison hurts it as it lacks the same energy and intensity in my opinion. I do really like the title track, especially the drum beat. Once My Eyes Move Mountains is also very good. Solid album, but just doesn't quite hit the same highs as the others here do for me. So it landed at good tier, maybe like around here. And then we have Death with Individual Thought Patterns. <laughs> One of their best lineups of all time, in my opinion, with Chuck alongside Andy LaRocque on guitar, Steve DiGiorgio on fretless bass, and Gene freaking Hoglin on drums. To me, this feels like the perfect melding of the speed and intensity of the early albums with some of the more technical and melodic elements of Human. Mentally Blind is also one of my favorites of this more technical phase, and another one that I had an immediate response to. In short, this album can basically be summed up as Human, but better. And I'll start shit. Which is why I'm putting it not only at perfect but all the way at the top. Y'all check out this playlist for plenty more death metal rankings, including 1990, 91, and 92. And again, let me know down in the comments what are your favorites, your least favorites, what would you add to this list. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.